Hey guys, welcome to the Cypress Nation. My name is Austin and this is my brother Mackenzie. And we got the 2020 Explorer XLT with us today. Yeah, and when, because this is the XLT version, this is currently the base model that's available for the vehicle, we're gonna be going over three features that you're not gonna to wanna to miss even in this, the base model. Okay guys, so we wanna start off with the front end of the 2020 Explorer. Just how beautiful the front uh, headlights look. The beefy front end, you know, looks pretty brutish. Yeah, it's kind of cool. The way they brought this, some of these, they shaped the bumper in to go forward without act and make it appear larger without actually having to make it into a larger vehicle that's just not gonna handle well on the highway. but. They achieve that look of that aggression and just that size of it. So you get the look of driving that great big beefy SUV without actually having to drive around a great big beefy SUV. My favorite is actually that they made the side scoops here a little bit bigger for that yeah. air curtain skirt that they're trying to create over the tires to help with aerodynamics. It's kind of cool because it ends up that it's not just visually appealing, it's also functional. Now, that aggressive styling in the vehicle comes through all the way through the side, and this is what Ford's really proud of, is the side profile of this vehicle. Now, the, the lines going through it, it really looks fantastic. It's really gorgeous. And one of the things that Ford's done is that they've made the vehicle look good. They've added those visual improvements while still making it so that you can recognize it as an Explorer. Now, one of the big improvements to the overall design of the vehicle, and it also kind of makes it look really nice as well, in my opinion, is that they've actually taken these front wheels and they've moved them forward. That's not just an optical illusion from the camera. There is not that much bumper in front of these tires. They moved that forward so that you would increase the handling of the vehicle. The engine's been moved backwards so that the center of gravity is more in the center and that gives you an, uh, an all-around improvement in the handling of the vehicle. This vehicle is basically going to handle like a vehicle almost half its size because of that. So in the 2020 Ford Explorer, you have two gas engines to choose from. The base model is your 2.3 liter with 300 horsepower, and your step up from that is your 3 liter, which is all new for 2020 with 346 horsepower. And if you want the ST model, you get the 400 horsepower out of the th same three liter. And coming into the spring of 2020, the hybrid Explorer comes with a 3.3 liter and 316 horsepower. And those engines go through the new 10 speed automatic transmission that's been used in the F-150s and the Mustangs all the way to drive through to the wheels. And now those wheels dr are driven by a four wheel drive system that is standard on the Explorer XLT and there may be a base model, which we're not sure if it's coming to Canada yet or not, but in the States it will be available and it will be a rear wheel drive only vehicle. Now for towing capacity, those engines are gonna to translate to a 5,000 pounds of towing for the uh, hybrid engine. For the 2.3 liter, you're gonna get 5,300 pounds of towing. And for the, five, for the three liter, you're going to get 3,600 pounds of towing. Now there's not a lot of variation on that and that's mostly because that most of the towing capacity is coming because of that fantastic transmission that we're moving over to the Explorers here for the first time. It's also in part because the vehicle is mostly designed for comfort with the suspension system that it's got. And don't forget that it also comes with your 7-pin and your 4-pin for your trailer. It does come with trailer sway, um, but it doesn't have a trailer brake uh, ever included. There's not an option for that. All right, so the interior features on the 2020 Explorer are extensive. They've completely re redesigned the interior. You've got a very fancy display gauge for your dash and tack, and they've also got a very nice setup in here for the, what do we call it, touchscreen? Yes, yeah. touchscreen. Now, this and the XLT are both of the standard versions of it. There are upgraded versions for both for the or for the TAC, you can have a, what is it, 12-foot display on it? 12.1. Yeah, it looks pretty fancy, too. It's pretty schnazzy. Oh. And speaking of bigger, there's also a 10.1-inch display available for the touchscreen, yeah. which looks awful, quite frankly speaking. It's very practical. has all of your display information available there. But it's just, it's big, and it 
doesn't look super nice in the middle of the dash, in my opinion. Anyways, but we're also looking at a whole bunch of upgrades for the current features that were already available in the Explorer. Now, a bunch of these are, stand, are standard, but some of them aren't. So we have the upgraded 2.0 Park Assist, which allows you to do your parallel parking without even actually having to shift the dial, or I think it's just you put your foot on the brake, isn't that it? Um, for what I know of, you just turn the gear, park, reverse, neutral, it steers, it brakes, gas. Oh, okay, so I had that completely backwards. Yeah. Well, good to know. And there's the winter package on these things, which is very nice. You get a windshield wiper de-icer, so it works just like the ice, the de-icer on your back window. But instead, it's under the windshield, right where the wipers are. So yeah. in the winter time, it'll just thaw the ice around there first, so that you're not going to wreck your wipers by trying to get them up and going while it's still frozen. Also comes with heated seats in the front, and middle row, and... Heated steering wheel. First time that's been available in the XLT. It's really cool because XLT has that as an option for the winter package, but it's standard on the uh, limited, the ST, and the platinum. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, I'm trying to think on if there's anything else that's like really cool or really outstanding to hear, but really, you still have your same drive modes. You still got your hill descent control and the like. You can shut your auto start stop system off. I guess the really cool thing mode. is the drive modes have a little animation. Ooh, fancy. How do I change that? Okay, so we're normal. Yeah. Slippery. Oh, that's cool. That is actually cool. So slippery, like it starts to like frost over. Normal just looks like a sunny day drive through the mountains. Eco mode is just a bunch of leaves in the background, like for cows to munch on, I assume. I don't know. And then there's sport mode, which is like, okay, that's cool. Goes all red. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. The background stays that color too. And then there's the trailer one as well. Was oh, there a trailer one? Tow haul. Looks like a transmission. Or clutch. That's actually really cool. Wow, this thing's got tons of surprises. Oh, one other thing I wanted to note, though, is that almost all of your driver assist features have now been moved into the touchscreen. Yeah. So you don't really have to go and dig through a whole bunch of tack menus in order to get to what you need. You just go over to your settings, and then you go to either driver assist assistance features, or you go into your general features. Hmm. That's all you really got to do. And I like that the... Climate control buttons are all accessible with actual buttons, including yeah. the heated steering wheel. It was kind of an interesting thing Ford was doing for a while there and that they were having a kind of redundancy in that you could access all of your climate features through the touchscreen, but they also had all the same buttons on the dash, with the exception of the heated steering wheel button, which is kind of odd. But now we have a designated heated steering wheel button. Yeah, and I guess another thing is there's no more CD players. Oh yeah, none of that. Can't do that. Can't have that anymore, Austin. That's ancient technology. That stuff belongs in a museum. Kids will never know. Shall we move to the back? For the mid row and the back, these seats are actually really comfy. Like, captain's chairs aren't usually this comfortable. These are super comfy. Like, these are as big as the ones are on the expeditions. I don't know if you've noticed that, but they certainly feel that way. It feels big, it feels solid, it feels comfortable. And these fantastically wide armrests. What do you think of those? They're beefy. They are. They're very plush. This is now a man's chair. I don't I don't care for how low it is, but I don't think it was designed for a man to really sit back here as much as a child who's maybe shorter than I. Well, I mean it, it's got like it's got the option for it. But it's actually I like how wide it is and how beefy it is. But like I feel like this indentation here. Mm. is wide enough for some, for an actual uh, for an actual adult human being to sit in. Yeah. And that it has that extra wideness to it if you need it. I oh. like that. I actually really think this is quite comfortable. Mm. I would totally sit in here for a long drive. This would be fantastic. Yeah, I think this would be fine. And how many count cup holders are we counting there, Aust? 
Oh. One. Let me slide back two. here. Oh, yeah, these things slide forward and back. Yeah. That's the cool thing is you can actually get more leg room. Mm hmm This way. Um, I got two in the door. You got two in your door? Two in my door. So two there and then two in the center. So six just for the middle row. What the crap would the middle row need six drink cup, or cup holders for? You never heard the saying? Two in the front row. Business in the front. One in each door. Party in the back, man. For crying out loud. There's four in the front, six just in the middle of the row, and I think there's two in the back row as well. Yeah, Should we find out? There's one there. I can't see the other one. Yeah, it's pretty plush, man. And you got heated seats down here. And heated seats. USB. Two charge ports. Oh, one is the US, normal USB, USB and the other is a USC charge port. USB C. Whatever. And you got eight. Austin, this is not a time machine. <laughs> and I like to point out that even in the XLT here, we've even got rear control or rear climate control. Yeah, we do. Which is pretty snazzy. Okay, yeah. It is just the two cup holders in the back row. So what does that total up to for the cup holders? That's 12. 12 cup holders. That is 12 cup holders for six people because this isn't the bench seat. So this is six people. So have 12 cup holders. 12. And the expedition has how many? 15. For so eight. Three more. Three more cup holders in, in the next size. Up. You get three more cup holders in the next size up. What's the escape going to have? 10? No, that's two sizes down, so it'll probably have like eight or seven. Which, considering it only seats five, is still far too many. <laughs> okay. We like your drinks, apparently. Well, Need a drink. <laughs> do you know what this means? I, I, I have a suspicion. We have to do the two brothers backseat test. Brother backseat test. Let's go. Let's get it over with. Okay, so the XLT has a latch here. I feel like I'm gonna break it. Nope, I don't. I'm just gonna pull it. Don't be scared, just pull it. Alright. So where's that latch? The latch is right there. Yeah. Oh, make sure you push in the head wrist button. Oh, I don't find it. Let's slide all the way forward and let's ah. see. Can you get it? Oh, it's got this lovely. Did you see this little pad here for your shoes as <laughs> you're trying to get in? Yeah. That is quite genius. Oh. Right, I can get in here. Oh, would you mind flipping my seat back up? Sorry, I'm pitching your fat rolls. Yeah, <laughs> that's fine. Okay, and we're in. Okay. That was actually easier than I thought, but it looked like you had a little more trouble. I had a trouble. It's a little higher than I thought. Well, I think with practice, you'd you'd be okay. Just a sec, let's pull these seats back. And let's dig these headrests so they're not digging into my the bottom of my back. Okay. You know, this is not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, yeah. Just, leg room. just first impression. Leg room is okay. Leg like, room is all right. But here's the thing. how You can also move those middle road seats forward, can't you? Yeah, you can. So like, like, mine's not. It's not. It's not mountains of space by any stretch of the imagination, but it's definitely adequate. Like we're both like six one ish. Yeah, and we got. I got knee room a bit. I can fit my hand between. Yeah. And we've got Hulk in the back here, so oh. you know we've got a good amount of room. It's pretty, but it's, and like the headroom's not bad. Not bad. Like you got a little armrest back here. You got yours. Yeah, this is an armrest. Like, I don't have like some... a little cut or, or kind of tray thing like yeah. you do. But it, mine's down lower, and they, they've got these cup holders down here, which I found out why they have them so down low. What? So in part, it's a little bit out of the way of your, out of your legs, but it's also so that when you fold these seats flat, yeah. you have more room, or it's wider in the back, so you can actually load an entire sheet of plywood in the back here. Oh, really? Yeah. So it gives you a couple extra inches width in terms of storage, which is something I like, because the old Explorers were nice on the other they looked really nice but when you got on the inside they always felt just a little bit cramped and i don't know if it was just the way everything was kind of designed 
or the way different moldings came out on the interior, it always just felt a little bit claustrophobic inside of them. And this, I have none of that feeling whatsoever. This is actually, I feel like I have space. I don't are you like leaning over to the side to try and give me space? No, I'm, I'm sitting pretty comfortably right here. I wouldn't want to be here like on a five hour trip, but like... I could do a two hour trip. Give me a two hour trip, I could probably deal with it enough. I could deal with a two or three hour trip like this. Yeah, so about two hours. Boom. Okay, let's get out of here. Oh, I remember. What? The upper models from the XLT, so like the Limited and XST, and they have a button instead of a latch. Oh yeah, and it's powered. It's powered. Cool. Let's Look. see if we can get out though. Yeah. Oh, I think the bench lifted up from. Hey. <laughs> oh gosh. Let's see. This is actually you just gotta kind of hug the seat as you get out, and that seems to be the secret. Uh, but you can't pull it towards you is the only problem because yeah. then it just knocks it back. Uh, okay. Oh. Uh, and just to get back in there again. What? I mean, like... That's not that difficult to get in the back. We love you back there. Like, you gotta, you have to be a little bit more limber too. For sure. Oh yeah, that seat goes way better. Look yeah. at the man. Oh. These are really comfortable seats though. Yeah, I like these center ones. These are nice, like way better than I expected. Oh, captain chairs are standard. Oh yes. These are the captain chairs are standard and is actually an upcharge for the bench seat option. And that's mostly because Ford was getting so many people who wanted the captain chairs that they decided to make them standard and just make the bench seat the upgrade. So one thing, guys, we forgot to do was the visors test when we were up in the front. So let's make sure that this covers the whole side window because that sucks when you get the sunshine just peeking through the edge. So take my head off almost, and we're good. But can you put it back? And he sticks the landing! 10 points. Okay, guys, that's our video for today. Let us know in the comments below if you like the 2020 Explorer or if there's something you dislike. Yep. And that's it for us today, guys. Thanks for watching Cypress Nation. Keep in, or Make sure you smash that thumbs up button if you liked us. If you want to subscribe, make sure you check that out and you make sure you hit that bell for notifications. We'll have another video out for you guys next week. Peace. Did you catch the fly? Yeah, I did. That's really impressive. I catched it and killed it. On caught camera. It. You caught it on camera. Now, for the next level. Chopsticks. <laughs>